Welcome to the Creator Series. This series is brought to you by Socialbook and was made with small content creators in mind. These videos will cover a range of different topics and I'll share my tips and advice on how to grow your YouTube channel, how to get monetized, and also free tools and resources that you can use to make the most out of your content. Hi everyone, it's Shirley and welcome to the fifth episode of the Content Creator Series. In today's video, we're gonna go over knowing your worth, how much to charge brands, and how to negotiate with brands. So this is more for content creators who have been in the scene for a while. You're getting contacted by brands or you're reaching out to brands and you want to start charging for your content, which is absolutely valid. Maybe you've decided to become a full-time content creator. I personally am not a full-time content creator, but I hope these tips can help you in your journey and kind of give you an idea of things to look for when negotiating with brands. So first is knowing your worth. I've said this before, but please do not discredit yourself. Making content is hard work and you should be charging something that you truly think is worth it for you. If it's harder to think how much to charge per video, you can think of it as an hourly wage. Like for this one video, how many hours of labor will it take for you to finish? Labor meaning filming and editing. Let's say for a 10 minute video, a brand offers $30 and this video takes you maybe five hours. If you charged $10 an hour, that would be $50, right? So they're paying you way less than minimum wage. So your video prices will vary depending on whether the video is dedicated or integrated. It's pretty straightforward. A dedicated video is a whole entire video about that one product or subject. An integrated video is where a small portion of the video mentions the product or service and it's more flexible with the rest of your content. A lot of vlogs have integrated partnerships or sponsorships because they don't ruin the flow of your channel. It's a pretty smooth transition, so a dedicated video can be a lot more work, but because of that, you can charge more for it as opposed to an integrated video. Depending on what you want to do and the flow of your channel, you can decide with the brand on whether you want to do a dedicated or integrated video. I know that there's like formulas and really complicated equations to calculate how much to charge brands depending on your subscribers, your views, whatever, but Socialbook has made it super easy to determine how much to charge for your videos. When you connect your YouTube channel to Socialbook, they will generate a YouTube report. They'll show you their suggested price range, cost per 1,000 views, and cost per engagement. And this is just a guide. You do not have to be super strict about it, but it's helpful if you don't know where to start and you're getting these offers and you just want a baseline of what to charge. Here's Socialbook's website. The URL is socialbook.io. To generate your YouTube report, you will click on Know My Influence and you'll click Connect. And here you can connect your YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok accounts. Then you'll go down to My Reports and click YouTube Reports. There are a number of things that the YouTube report shows you. It generates a suggested price range. The actual price of the influencer may vary, but based on the channel's historical performance and subscriber behavior, this is the price range that they recommend for influencers to charge. Over here is the cost per 1,000 views. So cost per 1,000 views is equal to the estimate price range divided by average view times 1000. This is a common formula that people use. You can calculate it yourself if you'd like. This is just a range so it can definitely fluctuate as you post more and gain more views. Over here is cost per 1000 impressions. This is also known as CPM, the estimated cost of every 1000 impressions. So according to YouTube, an impression is counted if the thumbnail is shown for more than one second and at least 50% of the thumbnail is visible on the screen. An impression is also counted every time an ad is shown at the beginning of the video. Basically, impressions measure your ability to put your content in front of your target audience. So when your impressions increase, there's a possibility of your content showing up more frequently in people's feeds. An impression is different from clicks. I know that it's very easy to confuse them. I definitely thought they were the same thing. So all you have to know is impressions count as how many times your thumbnails were shown to viewers on YouTube and click-through rate is how often viewers watch a video after seeing your thumbnail. This is cost per engagement, so every time someone clicks on your video, comments on your video, subscribes, likes your video. So these categories aren't based on prices, but they're still important to know, which is your engagement rate. This is how often your viewers engage with your video. This shows a percentage of how many viewers like, dislike, comment, or share your video. And this is average engagement. This refers to the number of actions received from the audience for a social media post. For a YouTube video, it will be the total number of views, likes, and comments. For an Instagram post, it will be the total number of favorites, comments, and views. And I know that some small content creators will be okay with anything because they're getting paid in the first place, but you really want to take a step back and ask yourself, is five hours of filming and editing this video, taking time out of your own life, 
to produce this content worth this amount of money? And if the answer is no, or if you feel even a little bit iffy about it, you don't have to take the offer. The worst that can happen is you decline the offer and they choose not to work with you, but a new opportunity will definitely come. And I am proof of that. So a health and wellness brand reached out to me to send me their gummies. I was intrigued by the product, but wasn't fully convinced by like their claims but i was still open to trying the product and giving my honest opinion on it and i think i charged more than they were expecting or it could have been that my analytics weren't up to par with what they were looking for but i remember them reaching out to me and then backing out and i'm surprised i wasn't more upset about it but i think deep down i knew that this product wasn't in my area of expertise or in an area that i'm familiar with i think it worked out for the best and more opportunities have come since then you want to know your audience and who you're making content for because that will ultimately help you narrow down what brands to work with. So don't work with just any brand. Work with a brand that matches you and your channel. Make sure that the products you're reviewing are things that you would actually use and are things that would be of good use to your audience. You don't have to fully believe in the product because you haven't even tried it yet, but you wanna make sure that you're keeping it real with your subscribers because that's what they're here for and the truth is always the best. So yeah, work with brands that align with your values, things that you're genuinely interested in. Sushbook will also generate a report of your audience demographics. It shows their interests, what video category they watch the most. It will show the country most of your viewers are from, age range of viewers that you watch your videos, as well as gender demographics. So this box shows the video category that you post the most. So as you can see here, my top video category is how to install. This is relating to reviews, beauty videos, tutorials. And my second largest category is people and blogs. So basically vlogs, lifestyle videos. So here are my audience demographics. This will differ for every channel. But Sociabook will break down your audience demographics based on gender, country, and interests. So most of my audience are female, which adds up to about 94%. This doesn't include non-binary or gender fluid viewers, and I'm not sure if YouTube has those options for your gender, but they definitely should because it's year 2022. So majority of my audience is from the United States, which is where I'm from. 12% is from the United Kingdom and 15% is from other, which might be people who don't have their location enabled. I'm not sure. And this shows the top interests of my audience. 51% is lifestyle, food is 9%, music is 6%, hobbies are 4%, beauty is 3%, entertainment 2%, knowledge 1%, pets 1%, vehicles 1%, fitness 1%, other 21%. I feel like other is very like niche. It's not part of these big categories. This is really interesting because I make mainly beauty videos, but a lot of my audience are interested in lifestyle videos. So this shows the different age groups of my audience. Most of my audience are 25 to 34 years old. A big proportion of my audience is 18 to 24 years old and a good amount are over 35. This information is really helpful to know so that you can narrow down your content because you want your content to reach a wide audience, not just like a small percentage of your audience. You wanna reach as many people as you can. And to do that, you want to make content that appeals to a lot of people. So topics that interest people of different age groups, of different interests and not just gender specific. So this is all very good information to help you decide which brands to work with depending on your audience. If you're unsure about whether you should work with a brand, you can ask yourself, what do your viewers watch you for? Do they watch you for productivity content, beauty content, fitness content and it also has to be content that you're excited about. I know I make like videos about growing your channel but don't feel pressured to make content for the views because that's one way to get burnt out. You don't want to get burnt out if it hinders you from making the content that you want to make. So I was very clueless when it came to asking to charge for my content because most brands will send you PR for you to review on your channel and I think if it's your first collab with the brand it's okay to get free product. And if it's your second collaboration with the brand, I think it's okay to start charging. I definitely didn't know where to start. I didn't know how to bring it up without making it sound aggressive. So I wanted to share what I usually ask brands. When a brand reaches out to me to send me free product to review, I will ask them if they have a budget. You can also ask, is this a paid collaboration or a paid sponsorship? And depending on their answer, you can go from there. You wanna ask a brand how much their budget is, not how much you charge. Because if you give a price upfront, you might cap it 
at just that when they might have offered more or even sometimes the other way around maybe their budget is less than what you had in mind so take initiative and ask first and see from there if it's something that you would like to move forward with i say to shoot your shot it doesn't hurt to show a brand that you're serious about your content the worst that could happen is that they don't have a budget and you can choose to move along with free product or focus your time on other opportunities it's really up to you and what you think of the brand and the vision of the content that you could create with the brand and that is it for this video i hope that this information gave you more confidence and knowledge to start charging for your content especially if you've been making content for a while and you don't really know where to start socialbook has such great tools for small content creators that can help you decide on a reasonable price range you can fill out your profile by using the brand collaboration form which i mentioned in my previous video and brands that use socialbook can see your profile and your price range and contact you directly from there. If you would like to try out Socialbook's free tools and resources, you can sign up through my link. I will leave it right here and in the description box down below. I'll leave a template below of what I usually say in emails when asking for a budget and feel free to use it and make changes as you'd like. If you have any tips to share, please leave them down below. I'd love to hear about them. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.